The film you're about to see is a record of the past because it was taken in this horizontal zinc distillation plant at Swansea, which was closed down in March 1960. Zinc is now being produced at Swansea Vale Works in this new plant by the imperial smelting process. But let us bring to life again activities linked with zinc production at Swansea for nearly a century. Let us spend... Maneuvermen start work. The daily cycle of operations begins with the morning scrape. That is the removal of the last amount of zinc from the condensers. Ravels are used to withdraw the metal into hand ladles. The metal in the ladle is skimmed clean of all extraneous matter and is then poured into molds, each holding 56 pounds. Retorts that have become defective during the process have to be replaced by new ones. The first step in changing retorts is the removal of residues from the defective retort. Then the surrounding clay is cut away. Tongs and a long pipe are used for the extraction of the retort from the furnace. retort is dropped into a bin for subsequent removal to the tip. The new retort is taken out of an annealing stove. It then has a temperature of nearly 900 degrees centigrade. The retort is inserted in such a way that the back and front ends rest on the appropriate ledges. The space around the retort is carefully looted with clay. Condensers are prized apart from the retorts by means of a steel bar. AM. The condensers are transferred from the furnace front to a place on the furnace floor where they can be cleaned of all inside accretion. 
This accretion is afterwards added to the furnace charge. A metal screen protects the workers from the radiant heat of the furnace, which at this stage of the manoeuvring is particularly intense. Starting at the bottom row, the men, using scoops, remove residues from the retorts. Through apertures in the floor, the residues drop onto a shelf below. From there, they go to the tip. Having used scoops for the removal of loose residue, the operators switch to rabbles when extracting slaggy and sticky residual material. Gas for the heating of the furnaces is supplied by mechanical gas producers. After the daily removal of ashes from the producers, the level of the fire bed has to be dropped. Holes in retorts are patched with clay an operation which is done by the leading hand of the respective section of the furnace. Good quality clay used for this purpose is applied with a paddle. The furnace charge stored in these bunkers consists of sintered zinc ore and carbon in the form of anthracite duff. It's prepared in another section of the plant and is brought to the furnace house by conveyors. 9.45 a.m. The charge is dumped onto the furnace floor. Because the protective screen had to be lifted to permit charging of the furnace, galvanized sheets are used to shield the men from the radiant heat. Special scoops are used for charging. At suitable intervals, the charge in the retort is densified with a puncher. After charging, the condensers are brought back to the furnace front to be inserted into the retorts.
condensers are looted to the retorts with clay. Great care has to be taken to make the joint between condenser and retort airtight. Looting is done with an iron tool having a crescent-shaped head. Before the tool is used, it has to be heated. The bottom row of the furnace is the last one to be charged. Charge left on the furnace floor is swept together in order to assess the amount of charge actually used. To support the prolongs, steel bars are placed on brackets in front of the condensers. 10.50 a.m. Prolongs are brought forward and placed on the furnace floor ready for use. This particular job marks the end of the maneuverman shift. 12.10 p.m. The reaction has proceeded to a certain degree and gases issue from the nose of the condensers. They are ignited by the valveman. prolongs are loosely put up to the condensers. Two p.m. The afternoon shift valveman starts his inspection of the furnace to make certain that a perfect seal exists between prolongs and condensers. Any leaks the valveman spots during his inspection tour are then sealed off with clay. from the prolongs is emptied into special collecting bins. Five p.m. Before tapping, the tapper moves the prolongs from bay to bay along the furnace. When tapping the bottom row, the molten zinc from the condensers is withdrawn into a hand ladle. The hand ladle is then emptied into the wheel tapping ladle. Before casting, the metal in the ladle has to be skimmed. Moulds are cleaned daily with a portable electric wire brush to ensure good physical quality of the zinc plates. At regular intervals throughout his shift, the valveman checks the temperature of the furnace. Pick it up a bit, Eddie. Okay. The direction of the gas and airflow in the furnace is reversed every 20 minutes. Plates cast from last tap metal are invariably of poor physical quality. Therefore, they have to be taken to the refinery for remelting and refining.
Here, stools are cast, each weighing 56 pounds. Before being transferred to the metal store, the output of each section of the furnace is weighed separately. In the metal store, the saleable metal is stacked in pallets, each weighing approximately one ton. Work at a horizontal zinc distillation furnace is one of the toughest jobs in industry. It requires great skill as well as physical strength and team spirit as well as individual initiative. A day at furnace number one is completed with the distillation period. This period lasts until the next morning when at exactly 7 a.m. the maneuvermen start work. The daily cycle of What you've just seen is the way zinc's been produced for the last hundred years. The method used is called horizontal distillation, a process prodigal of time and toil, dirty and uproarious, demanding much and giving grudgingly. Therefore, this horizontal distillation plant at Swansea Vale was closed down in March 1960.